What's going on Spurs fans? As you can tell, we just moved into our brand new apartment. The wall behind me is absolutely barren, but I got my Devin Vassell Spurs jersey on. Hopefully that makes up for the lack of scenery today, but let's hop right into the topic, which is Josh Primo and breaking down his summer league performance. And we've looked at specific parts of his game in the very first part of the series. And in part two of the six part series that I'm doing right now, we're going to be looking at his ball handling, his passing and his decision making. So let's just hop right into the film. Josh Primo definitely had moments where the ball looked like it was on a string when it was in his hands, and while we'll see some of that skill displayed throughout the following clips, it's important to recognize he has a ways to go before he becomes an elite ball handler at the next level. On this first play, Josh uses a high pick from Labissier to lose Isaiah right and pause. Primo could snake the screen by crossing over to his left hand and pulling up for a mid-range jumper or attacking the rim, but as we roll the tape, he drives right into Jarrell Martin, who anticipates the drive well, pokes it free, which spurs a jazz fast break and results in a pair of free throws for the veteran power forward. Although there were flashes of advanced ball handling from Primo, the rookie guard also fumbled the ball quite a bit when executing simple moves like this between the legs cross. And while he recovers the rock after dribbling it off his leg, he immediately looks to Devin to bail out the offense in a late shot clock situation, and thankfully Vassell answers with a beautiful fadeaway jumper off some immaculate footwork. Much like the first play, Primo uses a high screen from Scout to create separation from Shaq Buchanan, but frees it. This time, three defenders have linked up to cut off the 18-year-old guard, leaving with a couple of viable options. Josh could kick it out to Wieskamp, who's waiting with his hands out and butt low for a wide open above the break triple, or the rookie could go a more difficult route and try to flip the ball behind him to Labissier, who popped out of his screen for a potential top of the key three. But as we resume, he does neither, drives into a triple team, has the ball poked away, recovers it, and just can't finish over the outstretched arm of John Conchar. This one's pretty straightforward. Primo just loses control of the ball after Nathan Knight pokes it away on a hard hedge. And the suffocating ball pressure from Minnesota's smaller defenders made Primo very uncomfortable. Watch as McKinley Wright IV hounds the rookie, swipes the ball when he tries it behind the back dribble, and goes the distance for a couple of fast break points. Wright guarded Primo for most of the third quarter, and he found no reprieve as three-time Southern Conference Defensive Player of the Year Isaiah Miller took over those responsibilities in the final frame, crowding his airspace at every turn and eventually stealing the ball from behind. I don't know the name of this play, but it's a pretty nifty late clock out of bounds set, so let's go super slow-mo for this one. Primo sets a back screen to get Nate Renfro the ball, immediately sets a cross screen for Vassell, and makes a beeline towards Renfro for a dribble handoff. He then hits Martin and Teague with a hesitation as he attempts to round the corner, but Nate Sestina creeps over to provide additional help as he drives baseline, and Josh hits a cutting Wieskamp for a relatively uncontested layup that just fails to beat the buzzer. And despite the shot clock violation, it's still a nice find from Primo. This time, Josh brings the ball up the floor and probes the defense before retreating beyond the arc, and there's nothing too special about this assist, though it's nice to see Primo make a basic read without feeling like he had to force the issue to get to the rim and semi-transition. Don't let Primo's low assist numbers fool you. The rookie might have averaged closer to four assists per game had his teammates converted half of the scoring opportunities he set them up for. Primo creates just enough separation from Teague to get downhill, recognizes Sestina is sagging too far off Daquan Jeffries in the right corner, and makes another simple read for an open three that Vassell ends up hammering home on the follow. Let's slow this next clip down significantly so we can get a good look at how Primo manipulates the defense with his eyes. The 6'6 guard hits a hezzy that freezes Tillman, allowing him to blow by the big man and forcing Romeo Weems to step up and abandon any hope of recovering back to Jalen Morris in the right corner. Now, let's stop the tape. Notice how Primo maintains eye contact with Morris as he gathers the ball, which draws the attention of Eve Pons, and as we roll the footage, Pons rotates to the right corner, leaving Justin Turner open for Josh to hit him right in his shooting pocket with a slick one-handed no-look pass. We didn't see a ton of pick and roll passes from Primo, but the few he made were on the money, including this post-lob feed to a rolling Labissier. Upon a second closer look, Primo perfectly floated this pass to a place only Scal could retrieve it, but the veteran big man blew his chance to score around the rim by bringing the ball to his knees and giving Killian Tilly enough time to help for a weak side block. Before we move on, I think it's worth pondering whether Primo might have looked better as a distributor with a functional big man to work with out of the pick and roll. There's no easy way to put it, Scal was flat out awful for San Antonio during Summer League averaging just 2.8 points on 25% shooting and 17.2 minutes per game across five contests. 
Yet on this play, Le Bissier was a serviceable role man, slipping the screen, finishing with a dunk, and giving Spurs fans a glimpse of what Josh might be capable of as a pick and roll facilitator. On this possession, Josh makes a solid reactive read, so let's slow things down. After David Duke Jr. cuts off his lane to the hoop, Primo executes a half spin to create space and is immediately met by Kaiser Gates. So he gathers the ball like he's going to make an overhead pass, which makes Gates leave his feet, and then fires a mid-air wraparound pass behind Gates' back to a wide open Justin Robinson, who just can't get this straightaway three to fall, a trend for the poor shooting summer spurs. We discussed Primo's inability to generate separation from defenders at Summer League in the last video, and that issue's highlighted as he dances with the ball in an attempt to shake Alizé Johnson, but as he goes into his gather, let's freeze the film. Duke, who was stationed near the top of the key at the beginning of the sequence, anticipates Primo attacking middle, stunts towards the nail to deter him from driving down the heart of the lane, and as we unpause, Primo reacts to the pressure, rocketing a sidearm pass to an uncovered Jeffries, who also can't drain a lightly contested triple. This play is worth a look in slow motion. Watch as Primo approaches Malik Newman near midcourt and then quickly cuts back door to give Newman an easy target once Jordan Bowden and Marcus Zagorowski aggressively trap him. And once the rookie has the ball, he engages Raekwon Gray going downhill, forcing the big man to step up before hitting a rolling Robinson in stride with a perfectly timed shovel pass. The Admiral's son doesn't finish on the first attempt, but he cleans the glass like his father and gets the putback to go down. One thing that stood out to me was Primo's comfortability making live dribble passes. He only takes one dribble before firing this one-hander, and let's pause. There wasn't much room for error given the tiny window afforded by Buchanan's massive 6'9 wingspan, and even though his fingertips grazed the ball, as we unpause, Primo put enough zip on it to get it to his desired target despite the deflection, and Vassell nails a gorgeous mid-range jumper. This wasn't usually the case for the 12th overall pick, but let's take a look at his gravity on this play right around here. Four Jazz defenders are within a few feet of Primo, and a fifth was sucked into the paint only about 15 feet away. All of them have their eyes locked on Josh with their bodies angled directly towards him, and the 18-year-old has several options here. He could hit Vassell with a hook pass beyond the arc, he could kick it down the baseline to Morris in the left corner, or he might be able to find Matt Mitchell above the break. And as we roll the tape, Primo uses his eyes to draw DJ Funderburk into the corner and out of the play, and somehow angles this wraparound falling out of bounds to give Matt Mitchell an excellent catch and shoot opportunity that he just can't sink. Primo's ability to make a mistake and move on without letting it affect his confidence was encouraging, but let's pause. Greg Popovich rarely entrusts inexperienced players with NBA minutes, especially with the game on the line, and that's one of the reasons I'm not so sure he'll spend much time outside of the G League this season. Josh rarely looked out of place during Summer League, but you'll see that he was overwhelmed in this moment. Rimfro is clearly directing him to get the ball to Trey Jones, but as we resume, Primo panics and nearly turns the ball over, giving Trey no option but to throw up a tightly contested fadeaway that doesn't even come close to finding the rim, and the Spurs lose in regulation. Seeing an 18-year-old routinely make mistakes isn't exactly an anomaly. Here, Primo doesn't see Kyle Fogg following Wieskamp on the perimeter until it's too late, gets caught in the air, and throws the ball out of bounds with a hand in his face. Earlier in that same game, let's freeze it as Primo pushes the pace in transition. Josh has the ball in his left hand and Renfro is uncovered with a clear path to the hoop. He should probably give it up to Renfro right here, but as we unpause, Primo takes an extra dribble and bulldozes through Fogg on a live dribble bounce pass that ends up in the officials calling a charge and the Jazz retaking possession. We've talked about Primo's comfort making live dribble passes with either hand, but the decision making wasn't always on par for the rookie, so let's look at this feed in slow motion. Desmond Bain crept away from the corner and into the paint once he saw Biram Faye slip the screen, but Primo was dead set on hitting the roll man. He telegraphs this pass, and while Bain comes up with a deflection, Primo recovers the ball and attempts a poor shovel pass below Caleb Johnson's knees that kickstarts a Memphis fast break. Primo liked using overhead hook passes at Summer League, but he became a little too reliant on them and that made him a bit predictable. There's nothing inherently wrong with these kinds of feeds, but when you try to implement them after driving into dead ends against long defenders, it should come as no surprise when they decipher your intentions and get a hand on the rock like Tillman does here. So that about does it for this Josh Primo Summer League review. We looked at his ball handling, his decision making, and his passing. And we'll look at other parts of his game when we get to part three, four, five, and six of this series. I've really, really enjoyed making this. I hope you all enjoy watching it. And as always, thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification button, and even leave me a comment. Let me know what you like. Let me know what you want to see in the future. Of course, we still got the rest of this Primo series. We're going to get a Trey Jones series in here as well before the season starts. But until next time, Spurs fans, take care.